Welcome back, Rippers. You're going to have to look over my shoulder here for this one. So, you guys may not know it, but over on CRS Firearms, check out that channel if you haven't already. That's a great channel. He's kind of a kook, but he's a funny kind of kook. He's enjoyable to watch, and he's pretty knowledgeable. So, that being said, he's holding two contests for shooting. One of them is a contest where it's called the Triple 100. you got to take two head... Uh, two man-sized targets with heads, a certain target. You got to shoot them out at 100 yards. You got to take 100 headshots in 100 seconds, or the closest to 100 seconds, it looks like. So right now, the highest person is around 3 minutes and 50-something seconds or something with penalties, right? Because if you miss, you get seconds added on. So that being said, I'm prepping a couple rifles. Well, I'm prepping my 22 rifle here. Uh, which I'm going to use an uh, SR-22 uh, Ruger, right? So I got it set up with a with just an inexpensive Bushnell, uh, what is it, a 3 to 12 scope on there, or 4 to 12 scope, um, and uh, because it'll have the capacity I need so I can do less uh, uh, reloads to save time, and I put a 2.5 pound trigger in it, right? Or a 3.5 pound trigger, sorry. And uh, when I was two and a half pound trigger, so that way the trigger breaks nice and quick and easy. So as long as it runs reliably, and you know what I say, keep it wet, keeps it going, right? So that that being said, it's all kind of ready to go. And I thought, well, I ought to show you how to put a scope on the right way. And so that I have this. This is my SOCOM 16. Uh, this is the SOCOM 2. It has the Voltor, you know, rail on it instead of just the regular fiber stock or it kind of goes over the stock. And uh, I got it set up. I, I, I had a rear a rearward scope on it that went right here. And it just, with this action, the way it works and everything, this rifle really wasn't meant for it. So I'm gonna switch it up to what's called a scout style scope, which is a long eye relief scope. These are also what you use on pistols and things like that. You can get scopes so that they come clear to where, you know how when you're looking through a scope and it's got that black ring Right, and you keep moving it back to your eye until it's just at that point where you don't have that black ring when you're holding it comfortable, right? When you're holding it like this, and you can just put your cheek and everything where it should be, and you should just be able to see the crosshairs with no black, right? I had a regular eye relief scope, so now I'm going to go to this scout style eye relief scope. So I'm gonna show you what we do when we put it on here. Now, put the rings on. This scope's supposed to sit forward of the action. These scopes are really, really good for offhand shooting, real quick acquisition, right? So you want some, they're not a, meant for high power scopes necessarily. They're more of a low power uh, scope that is that you're able to just pull up and pull up a snapshot with, right? So this is a 308 on this one. As most people know, the M14 is a 308. And uh, so I've got these rings set forward here and, and they're a little loose right now. And I'm gonna set, you set your scope on here. Now you want these rings far enough apart to where you have some forward and back movement, right? And so you fit your rings on there and I, I move it. Now, if it doesn't bind and it feels kind of nice and free, I mean, it might be a little sticky, but not too much. As long as you look along the top here and you see even lines, right? Then you know these rings are good and true. Now, you can get a truing tool. If for some reason this feels like it's in a bind or you don't see even margins, uh, in your rings to where they meet the scope tube uh, you can actually have those trued by a gunsmith with a lapper which is basically just a steel bar with a abrasive on it and they just slowly work it back and forth until it's nice and true and they also take a truing tool which is two bars with points on them and they stick them in there and lock them in and those points should basically come and touch each other and we can show you that in a different video but right now these rings are fit and true and fit and square so what I'm going to do is I've got it loosely on here and I'm just going to look down here and see if I'm where I'm at. Okay, I need to just move her forward just a tad, right? And don't worry about side to side yet. I'm going to show you what I do for that. Now, got this set. Let me take a look. Right? Okay, that looks good. Now, so now what I'm going to do since I have this and it's where I want it, I'm going to tighten these down. And I use, these are a half inch... Um, nuts on here and they have a flathead screwdriver capability too and i like big rings like this this these are six screws per ring 
So it's a wider ring. And I like those on a rifle like this because of the recoil and because of the rugged, the ruggedness of them. They're going to, you know, keep from moving and be strong in case you drop this rifle or fall down while you're running away from the zombies and all that kind of stuff, right? So that being said, I've got it all set up, got it tightened down. Now you can use a torque wrench on this and I'd recommend doing that. Uh, if you have a torque wrench, but otherwise just don't muscle tighten them. You just want them You want them snug and then maybe like a like a quarter to half a turn more just so it's nice and Snug and tight and then a little bit and that's it. Don't got to crank them down tough One reason you want to be able to get these off fairly easily without having to have a breaker bar or something If you're out in the field and for some reason your scope breaks and you're gonna go and revert back to your your uh, fixed sights or your iron sights uh, so you're going to want to be able to get them off. And that's one reason I like these type of rings or quick release rings, right? And also you don't want to over tighten it because you don't want to snap a bolt. Cause what good would that do? Right? Especially you can do that when you're taking it off as well. So now that we've got that said, I got this on here and now I'm going to put these rings on the, the tops of the rings on, but I'm only going to put one screw in the center hole on each one. Okay, and the reason I'm going to do this is because I don't want to tighten it all the way yet. I just want to get it even. All right, so I'm going to get those on there. And I got the scope set distance wise to where when I pull it up to the natural cheek position, everything's about doing everything the same. Cheek in the same spot, eye at the same height, right? Holding the rifle the same way, all right? That's one of the keys to shooting is consistency in your form, right? So that being said, we're just going to tighten these rings down a little. We're not going to tighten them. We're just going to loosen it until we feel it touch. And this gap is the same on both sides, right? And basically what that usually is, is about a fingernail on both sides. And then you're just going to go until it touches, right? But you're not going to tighten it. All right. I'm going to go on that side. I'm going to put my fingernail in there. Oops, drop that one. Okay. So, I'm going to get this one to where it touches. All right. I want to thank all you guys for coming back to Rip Curl Readiness. And uh, please share this video out if you haven't already shared them already. But it never hurts to share each one. Because we have to support each other, especially these days. Now... Now that I got it on there like that, you'll see that I'll be able to move my scope back and forth like this, right? So I go and I use a tool like this. And this is a scope set, right? And what it has, it has a square shaft right here. And it's all tight, it does not wobbly, and it's got lines in it. And this is for lining up your crosshairs with, right? And it's got a level here because it doesn't do you any good to set a level up here or on your scope because you really, that's not relevant to the action of the gun, not yet. Okay, so what you want to do is this thing pulls apart and you want to set it right here in front of your dial and you want to make sure it's flat down. You'll notice each one of these grooves is all machined so it's real consistent and it's attached to your action, right? You don't want to attach it to your barrel if you're going to attach the scope to your action. If you're going to attach your scope out on the handguard, which in this case the handguard and the action are all one piece. Okay, but if it was a AR that had a handguard that was uh, had a rail on it and a rail on the back, and you're going to put a scope back here, you want to do this on the part where your scope's mounted. Okay, um, and that will keep because you don't want to put your scope up here or have your uh, your your scope up here, but your action be off, you know, kind of thing. Anyway, so you just put it in front of the rings right there. And you make sure it has a rubber band right here that pulls it down onto the flat. Okay, so when you pull it down on the flat, you'll you'll want to make sure it's not cocked up on one side or anything. All right, make sure that rubber band's evenly pulling. And just make sure, yeah. Okay. Now what you do since you're you're in the scope here, you're pulling against the action. So now you know you're flat on this this plane or this level right here right which is basically your gun okay so then you kind of move that you'll see there's a little level right here see that level you want that bubble in between those white deals 
Okay, so now the gun is level. And you don't want to touch it a whole lot or move it around. You want to get it in between those. Okay, so now you know the gun is level. Which means these crosshairs are level to your bore or your axis or at least fairly close to it, right? So we got it all level. Now you just want to look down the scope, right? And get her... You turn it until it matches these lines. Now, you'll, look, your reticle will be in the scope. You'll be able to see it all the way across, and you'll be able to relate it to these lines. And so if it's crooked, this helps you see it more. You want to get it to where it lines up either in between or on one of those lines, depending on the relation to the scope. And then you know that you're level with your action or your, your gun with the scope. So... I'm looking here, get my cheek back here where it needs to be. And I'm pretty darn close right there. I'm right on the money, in fact. So now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna put a little tight, just, just like a quarter turn each side, right? Of each of these screws. Boom, boom, right? And you're just gonna keep alternating take a little turn go back look make sure it didn't move because they can actually move depending on the kind of range you're using and then we'll go through and we'll basically start alternating you want to take and go from this one then you just go until you feel a little bit of resistance and a quarter turn then this one quarter turn then you know the the one down on this corner quarter turn and the one on this corner quarter turn, right? So I'll show you here up close a little. So what I'm saying is, is you go quarter turn, quarter turn, quarter turn, quarter turn, quarter turn, quarter turn, right? And uh, as long as you're alternating from sides, so you can start in the center and go quarter turn, quarter turn, then this corner, quarter turn, quarter turn, quarter turn, quarter turn, and then recheck. And then you do it again until you're getting pretty tight, you know, where you're, you're feeling resistance. It's nice and snug. And then you just keep alternating like that and keep checking between each time you, you do a quarter turn on each one. And when you're at that point where you're putting the final quarter turn on, you just do the same thing. Quarter turn, quarter turn, quarter turn, quarter turn, quarter turn, quarter turn, right? Back and forth, right? Just like you would do the lugs on your car. And then that'll be your final tightening. And then once you've done that, just pull up one more time to take a cheek look to make sure you're level with your hairs, right? And then you're good to go. Now your crosshairs are level with your action or your gun, which should be pretty much perpendicular to your bore, and you're good to go. And you want it so that, and so this right now is just set up to where I can just snap it up right where it needs to be, and I'm right on target. And that's how you do a scope. Pretty easy, right? Right. So you don't have to do all these things where you're balancing a bunch of levels on different parts of your gun or putting it up here, which doesn't make any sense at all. Now, if you are going to put a level on your gun, you can, after you've got it all leveled up, because now you know it's level, right? So you could come, while this is level, you set your gun level with this, right? And then if you wanted to add a level onto your scope tube, which some people do, they have a little level that hangs off the side here that clamps onto the scope body. Well, you'll set this level with this level because you know it's level with your crosshairs and you know it makes your gun level. So now once you have that level that's clamped on level with the level that's on this, when it's attached, you know you're good because it doesn't do any good to have the gun crooked like this, right? And then put a level on it and level it up. Right, and it could be just a fraction off, but put, you put your level on, you'll be off. So you need this level tool right here on the action or on your rail where you're mounting the scope, right? Just like that, and then you could clamp a level onto your onto your uh, your crosshairs, right? So I even have one that has a compass and a level on it, which doesn't make much sense because you have to put your head up to look at the compass anyway, but it's always just another compass, so while you're walking, you could actually use it. It's just kind of a gimmick. I got it more for the level so that when I'm shooting uh, 
prone or on a bench or something, I can level up the gun and make sure I'm on the money. So I hope that helps you guys. I hope you tune in to CRS Firearms. I'll let you guys know when I'm going to submit my video because I have to submit it on Rip Curl Readiness at the range, and I'll do it at Rip Curl Readiness. And uh, you'll know when it goes out to his. Please go see it on his when he does it. Subscribe to his channel. Let him know that you're a ripper and that you're rooting for me, right? Because I think I can beat three minutes and 40 seconds for 100 rounds. We'll see. It depends on how reliable this shoots and how accurate it shoots, which I'm going to find out this week as soon as it stops raining. So once I do that, I'll bring you guys along for that, as of course, for the practice runs, and we'll see if we can't smoke it, right? Let's see if we can get like a two-minute run, right? Somewhere between two and three minute, maybe even a sub two minute, right? It's gonna be four magazines with 25 rounds each for 100 rounds, right? And then if you have a jammer malfunction, you kinda of have to keep track of that in your head. So I'm gonna have a spare 10 round magazine to make sure I make up my 100. Now, I'm not sure that's something that other guys have done. They may have just taken that jam and taken it as a miss, right? Because they don't have enough hits on the target. I think sometimes it makes sense, rather than taking a two second delay, depends on how fast you are, to throw in that last magazine, that 10 rounder, and throw out however many jams you had, if you had jams. So you can see there's some thinking to this. And it's gonna be fun, I'm gonna enjoy it. I hope you do too. So be sure to practice, practice, practice. And if you can carry, then do, right? And make sure you stay sharp. And make sure to tune in, stay safe, stay secure, always be aware of your surroundings, and be sure you're prepared and ready for anything that may come your way. Till next time, adios.